12 Unexpected Food Etiquette Rules from Around the World If one man's meat is another man's poison, then you could also say one man's fork is another man's weapon in some parts of the world. When you travel abroad and adventurously try the local cuisine in a traditional setting, you might notice how a certain country's table manners are very different from your own. Seriously, who would have thought that asking for salt and pepper could be considered impolite? Of course, you don't want to embarrass yourself or come off as rude or barbaric. So here are 12 quite unexpected food etiquette rules from across the globe. Before we sit down and dine around the world, be sure to subscribe to our channel for your chance to always fill your belly, er, brain that is, with all kinds of surprising facts and useful advice. Once you've clicked that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the updates coming out daily on the Bright Side of Life. Okay, back to our list. 12. Don't use forks in Thailand No, it's not forks and spoons that are a no-no here, just forks. And it's not like you can't use a fork, you just can't eat from one. Let me explain. In Thailand, picking food up with a fork is considered bad form. However, you are allowed to push food onto a spoon using a fork. That's it. And if you think you can't go wrong with just sticking to chopsticks, you better forget about it if you're having rice. It's traditionally served on plates, not bowls, and a spoon is what you need to enjoy it the Thai way. <music> 11. Don't clean your plate in China What's the best way to show the cook you really liked your meal? Eat up every single morsel on your plate, right? maybe even ask for more if you really enjoyed it. In China, however, it's impolite to finish eating everything on your plate. Empty plates indicate that a host hasn't served enough food and guests are still hungry. So if you want to compliment the chef or host, leave some food on your plate, no matter how tasty it is. Yes, you'll need to control yourself somehow. Oh, and believe it or not, belching at the table isn't just acceptable, but also a great way to show you're enjoying the meal. 10. Be ready to share a plate in Ethiopia As you sit at the table in Ethiopia waiting for someone to give you a plate to eat from, you might miss the actual meal. Everyone else will just eat from one large serving plate in the middle of the table without using any cutlery. For many locals, getting a plate to yourself is weird and even wasteful. Only grab from the part of the serving dish closest to you. Reaching across is considered rude. Also, wait for the end of the meal to enjoy the meat dishes. They're the last thing to be eaten. 9. In Italy, you'll insult the chef if you ask for extra cheese. I don't know about you, but the more cheese on my pizza or pasta, the better. And, although Italians do love this product, it's considered rude to ask for extra cheese. It may insult the chef because they take it as you not liking the dish the way they prepared it and wanting to change it. And, get ready for this, adding Parmesan to your pizza is also considered pretty crazy. Plus, not all pasta dishes are supposed to go with Parmesan either. Hey, Italians are known for their incredible culinary arts, so let's just take it from the experts. 8. Don't ask for salt and pepper in Portugal Just like you shouldn't ask for extra cheese in Italy, you can erase the phrase, could you please pass me the salt, from your vocabulary if you are in Portugal. If you ask for salt and pepper here, you may hurt people's feelings. It's kind of like with Italy, the cook may feel insulted by the fact that you need to spice up the dish they've served you. Plus, if you're eating local, you probably won't even need to add any more seasonings to your food. I mean, these chefs are highly skilled and respected. They'll whip up the best meal of your life! 7. Be careful with chopsticks in Japan Let's imagine you're dining in Japan. Chopsticks feel like the best utensil to go with. Yet, when you stick them in your rice bowl, you get surprised looks. What's the faux pas here? Well, 
it's not recommended to stand your chopsticks up vertically in the land of the rising sun. According to tradition, people place chopsticks vertically during funerals. In a restaurant, doing this may insult the owner. So, to avoid an awkward situation, set your chopsticks down parallel to the edge of the table in front of you if you're taking a break between bites. 6. Don't touch food with your left hand in the Middle East. In the Middle East, India, and some African countries, the left hand is used for, uh, cleaning yourself up after you go to the bathroom. In South India, you can't even touch the plate with your left hand since it's considered too dirty to be anywhere near food. So if you ever find yourself in this part of the world, remember to go with your right hand to eat or socialize. And what should you do if you're left-handed? Go without eating? Of course not! Just make sure you only use your left hand in that case, because for you, it's basically what a right hand is to right-handed people. 5. Don't just sip on your wine in Georgia. Wait, what? Why am I not allowed to slowly sip on my wine in one of the major wine regions in the world? Well, it all comes down to the art of toasting, which Georgians do not take lightly. Only after someone at the table finishes their long, beautiful, heartfelt story of how they're wishing everyone present good health and love can you drink your wine. And you have to drink the whole glass at once. Bottoms up! Four, don't fill your own glass in Japan. If you find yourself at a dinner party in Japan and wine is involved, never get a refill yourself. You're supposed to fill the glass of the person sitting next to you at the table and they'll return the favor. If you can't wait for your refill and decide to ignore the friendly neighbor rule, don't be surprised when you get disapproving looks. So, just be patient and respectful. Three, only drink cappuccino before noon in Italy. It's a sunny afternoon in Rome, you get yourself a cappuccino and a nice little dessert, and you're getting weird glances from everyone around. Italians do drink cappuccinos, of course, but it's mostly a breakfast drink or even a substitute for breakfast. But if you drink this milky, foamy coffee later in the day, it can upset your stomach, at least according to the locals. No one will say anything to you or get offended, but they'll immediately know you're a tourist. So if you're looking to blend and fit in, grab an espresso after 12 p.m. and get that caffeine boost you probably need around this time of the day anyway. Two, guests are welcomed with half a cup of tea in Kazakhstan. When we think tea ceremony, we usually associate it with the UK and all their fancy tea drinking etiquette. But it turns out there are plenty of tea fans in Kazakhstan, and they've got rules when it comes to drinking it as well. Whenever you visit someone's home or even some company's office, you'll be offered a cup of tea. But that cup won't be filled to the brim. Before you start questioning your host's generosity, remember this. Half a cup actually means your hosts don't want you to leave soon. Pouring just half a cup is the host's way of letting you know that they want to keep your nice conversation going and keep pouring you piping hot tea. If you get a full cup, however, it's a slight hint that it's time to go home. 1. A clean teapot is a teapot without a soul in China. If you've been invited to a tea ceremony in China and offer your help with the dishes afterwards, don't even think about washing that teapot. The Chinese don't wash teapots, especially traditional clay ones, with dish liquid. It's washed with water or special sand and then left to air dry. The resulting plaque that has all the flavor and color of tea gives the teapot soul, which is why it's prohibited to kill it with different cleaning chemicals. You don't want to upset the ancient Chinese tea spirits, do you? Yeah, me neither.
Which of these customs shocked you the most? What are some food etiquette rules in your country? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a like and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.